Welcome everybody to Lauren's Crazy Pet Show. We hope you are safe and sound during this really rough period. But you know, there are so many wonderful things you can do with your pet. And we're gonna show you some really fun activities, both mentally, for you and your pet, and physically as well. Some you might not even have thought about. Right now we're at Rye Beach in Westchester, New York, where you can actually go on the beach with your dog until the end of April. But this is just a great time to get outdoors with your dog. Take a walk as long as you are observing social distancing. Shake. Bottle. Oh. This is a beautiful day to be out and about with your pups. Are you doing more walks now? What are you doing differently during the coronavirus? Walking more often. Now that we have the free time, yes. we, we usually do walk the dogs together but we're walking more up and now. We try every day to come out. And you said your best friends and your dogs are best friends. Yes, and we're lucky. <laughs> we're very lucky. And yes. we have time now because we both got laid off from our jobs. I'm sorry. So we're now we're here. We'll be fine. Um, we'll but be we're fine. here every day. These guys are great for our mental health. Oh my gosh, we got to get out of the house more. We're in the house all the time now. And you don't even know if you're doing the right or the wrong thing by coming here. You're trying to keep social distancing, but this place is great for the dogs. They seem to be having a really good time. They're having fun, they're out, they're not driving me crazy. Well, we're home instead of going to work, so they get a lot more attention, and they get to go out for walks, long walks every day. They're both rescues. She's uh, just about a year old. This one's uh, eight. She's a Great Pyrenees Golden Retriever mix, and she's a purebred Great Pyrenees. Again, they're both rescues. She's actually uh, deaf and was dumped on, I believe, Facebook or Craigslist, Craigslist or something by the breeder to try and get rid of her. They give you that affection Sanity, and yeah. sanity break during times like this, for sure. Oh, the dogs are having so much fun, and their owners, too. But of course, we all have questions about how the virus might affect our pets. So we took a trip to Spot On Vet in Stanford to answer some of your questions and our questions as well. Kaylee, the question we keep getting is, can my pet get the coronavirus? Sure. So uh, the short answer is that all of the evidence right now suggests that it, no, that's not the case. Uh, that's according to the CDC and also the AVMA, which is the American Veterinary Medical Association. They are recommending that if you are sick or you're confirmed positive, that you have somebody else potentially take care of your pet because a pet can be what's called a fomite. A fomite is something much like this leash. So if a person were to rub their nose or rub their mouth and then touch this leash, and then I were to touch this leash and rub my face, there could be potential transmission. So the same thing with a, an animal. If an owner were to sneeze on their pet, and then someone were to touch their pet and wipe their face, it's possible. But they don't get sick from the virus. So the dogs that were tested positive that everyone's talking about that were owned by COVID positive people never displayed any symptoms and recovered uh, and then were swabbed negative uh, when they were returned to their owners. There are certainly precautions if you wanna be overly cautious. You can take a rag, you can take rubbing alcohol, mist the rag with rubbing alcohol and just rub their fur. Here at Spot On Vet, we can see that obviously there are a lot of changes due to everything that's going on. We're, we're standing right here. There's a sign next to you about curbside drop off. So you've had to really adapt. We have. We had to institute telemedicine. So if you have a question or want to talk to a doctor from your home and you don't want to leave, we can. We have the ability to do that. And then curbside, we're not even bringing the animals and the people into the building. We're simply coming out, putting our own leash on the pet, bringing the pet back into the building. We're wearing full personal protective equipment. And then we're video conferencing the owner so they can see the exam from their car. Very, very interesting because, you know, people are nervous that maybe vets would have closed, but luckily you are an essential service. We are. We are. So in Connecticut, the pet care industry, in addition to veterinarians, are essential. So even the daycare can stay open. And that's especially important for people uh, who are our first responders who can't stay home and they have to go to work. And sometimes they're working 24 hour shifts and there's no one to take care of their pet. So that's really important. And I applaud you because I know that you here at Spot on Vet are involved in really helping the community even further because you are part of a donation team. We are. So we started a personal protective equipment drive. We have a lot of clients, uh, vet side and hotel side who are doctors or nurses for our local hospitals and we had some surplus masks and gowns and gloves so we collected those and then we also actually sent a letter out to about 11 surrounding animal hospitals in the area you know just trying to really rally the troops and so we're going to deliver those to Greenwich Hospital, Stanford Hospital and White Plains Hospital.
So the CDC continues to stress that pets do not pass along the coronavirus to their owners. But just recently, there was a case in the Bronx at the Bronx Zoo where several tigers and a lion tested positive for the coronavirus. Apparently, they got it from a zookeeper. We'll just have to keep our eye on that one. Now, coming up, we have some fabulous tips on keeping you and your pet from going stir crazy. And we also have what could be some surprisingly good news from local shelters. Stay tuned, Lauren's Crazy Pet Show is coming right back. Welcome back to Lauren's Crazy Pet Show, everybody. We're here on Rye Beach, where there are so many dogs out here and so many people having fun. And it's just a reminder that you can still go out as long as you keep your social distance and still have a great time with your pet. We decided to take a look at what's going on at some of the local shelters during this crisis. So we traveled down to Westchester Humane Society. Let's take a look. So one of maybe the silver linings in all of this is that we're seeing an uptick in fosters and adoptions. Are you seeing that, Leanne? Absolutely. We have seen um, over the course of the last number of months continual uptick in the number of adoptions occurring. We have a large and extensive foster network, especially for kittens. Kitten season is coming in the spring when there's lots of babies, and we make great use of that so that we can save more kittens and get more adopted. One of the reasons is because it's nice, if you're socially isolated, to have a friend. Absolutely, and you know, there's been all kinds of studies done about what wonderful therapy it is to have a pet at home, whether it's just to make you not lonely or to make you feel better when you're feeling ill, and especially in these times now to calm everybody and give everybody a purpose. A dog and a cat are part of the family and being able to spend more time with them is always a good thing. I think that's playing out in the public right now and you're seeing that in a lot of press for sure. In my own personal case, my husband and I have a dog and a cat. The dog we just adopted from here about three weeks ago. So it's a new dog for us and we are out all the time with him. It's a great time to actually be able to acclimate him to our family. My husband is home all the time and and he is getting a lot of attention, a lot of walks, and we are seeing neighbors that we haven't seen in years out with their dogs and socializing from a distance. Everybody's waving, friendly, children on bicycles. It's a nice thing. Now, of course, the construction here. Yes. Now, that doesn't stop because yes. you are getting ready for really a new building. A whole new building. We're going to have a whole new second floor, and we're going to have a whole new first floor coming down the driveway off of the existing facility. We'll about double our square footage. And you have other ways that you raise money, and one of them, which was absolutely one of my favorite things, I saw on Instagram your videos with the dancers and the dogs. I know. That was amazing. Mm -hmm. For those who might have missed it, will you just talk a little bit about that? Absolutely. I loved it. I loved it. So for many years running, we produce a calendar every year as a fundraising experience. Um, we have awesome photographers that donate their time, and we get the calendars printed for public consumption, and it's a fundraiser for us. This year was very special because we partnered with a dance studio and did the dancers with dogs that have been adopted from here. They were all stagings of significant ballets. There were all kinds of costumes and the dogs had to be very well behaved and some of them weren't as well behaved. <laughs> But we got a calendar out that was unbelievable. It was a great experience, and it's a beautiful calendar. And I love the behind the scenes <laughs> oh video gosh. that you showed. I just love it. It's it always the best. It's so like, good. With TV shows, everyone wants to see what's going on behind the scenes. It's, it's a lot of, it was a lot of fun. Now, for those who want to help out now during this time, what would you suggest and how can they contact you? Well, we are taking foster applications. Right now, we have placed the cats and dogs into foster that need place. Placing, but every week, especially as kitten season comes closer and closer in the month of April, we will be reaching out to more of those applicants to place fosters. We have two types of donations that we're always extremely pleased to get. One is the number of donations that people bring here to the shelter. Food, blankets, towels, cleaning products, things that we use every day to keep our shelter running. Some people also bring dog food, cat food, treats, toys, 
and we are also continuing to ask for monetary donations. Our operating income is decreased, so a financial donation is always incredibly welcome. That's such great news that fosters and adoptions are up, but please check in with your local shelter because they can always use your donations. When we get back, we are going to show you a very unusual activity that you might not have thought of that you can do with your dog. Stay tuned, Lauren's Crazy Pet Show is coming right back. Welcome back everybody to Lauren's Crazy Pet Show. We are now at Rye Town Park, just a couple of steps away from Rye Beach. Dogs are allowed here all day long on leash, but in the mornings from six to nine, they're allowed off leash. Isn't that cool? Equally cool, we have a wonderful idea, surprising idea of an activity that you can do with your dog. Practically any dog can do this. It's a sport that is growing in popularity. I bet you didn't think of this. Take a look. Ready, ready, good boy, ready. Fight. Go. Christine, this is something you might not think you could do during the coronavirus, but it is. <laughs> yeah, we're usually out quite a ways into the woods and we're usually out on off hours too. Um, cold is so important for them to keep them safe and, and not overheating that I'm usually up around this time of year, around 5.30 in the morning. I'm usually off the trails by eight o'clock. Rune in particular will get uh, four or five miles out in the woods before we loop back. There aren't very many people out there. <laughs> and it's a very unusual sport. I'm so intrigued by it mm -hmm. because people often think, well, you can only do that if you live in Alaska and you can mm -hmm. only do that if you have huskies. But you say that's yeah. not true. All of it kind of comes down to what your goal with it is. Um, training a full kennel of 35 or 40 dogs and that life is totally different than I think what most people are probably going to be doing where you have one or two dogs dogs and you just want to do something new and fun with them. For me, I started just with Ember. I bought her a harness and taught her to walk in front of me and they need to know to turn left, to turn right, to keep going straight, to stop. And then it kind of progressed from there where I was like, okay, she can do it flat. So let's bring the bike in. And she loved as soon as she brought the bike in, she was like, let's go. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I could see they, they yeah. obviously they can't wait to get started. So the bike is a sort of a train training mm -hmm. to do the sledding. Is that how it works? Um, you can do either. There are actually people who just do dry land and bikes. Bike joring, it's called. Um, like I said, there's so many ways you can go with it. The first race that I did was dry land and it was all bikes and rigs. The bigger four dogs, six dog teams, you can put them on a wheeled rig um, and they have enough power to pull that weight. You wouldn't be able to do that with just one dog. But you have your bikes um, and then they have scooters too made specifically for dogs. So there's um, a lot of variety because usually mm -hmm. we think of the Iditarad, yeah. which somebody just won yeah. uh, recently. Yes. So that is sort of the peak of all of dog sledding. How does that work? It's a distance race. You have your huge kennels that are out doing that. And that's um, the kind of kennel that Rune's from actually. Cybersong is trying to work their way toward the Iditarod in the next year or two. And that's where you have just tons of dogs and it's more than a full-time job really because you have to be out there running them and training them. There's mid distance, which is similar, but you're not going as far. And then there's sprint races, which are very quick. The sprint races that we went to this year, the first one was two miles. The second one was almost five, like four and a half. And that's much more, you know, time-wise, it can do it with just these couple of dogs and train for that. So you can really just do it as an activity, mm -hmm. which we want people to know about because yeah. it's not something you would think about. Or yeah. you can, of course, do it. Make you it know, your lifestyle. Make it a lifestyle. <laughs> but you have Huskies here today yes. and they're both absolutely beautiful. And I think a lot of people are going to be surprised <laughs> to know that Ember is a rescue. She is. And she's 13 years she old. She is 13. She just turned 13 on St. Patrick's Day. I got her when she was two and a half. Someone had had her and another husky. They were just getting out of the house just over and over and over again, which they'll do because they need to psychologically and physically, they need to get out and run. And they're known for that. If they're not getting enough exercise, they will find a way to break out of your house and go exercise themselves. Unfortunately, she was out so much. Um, she had picked up fleas and tapeworms and I think she was down to 28 pounds and she had Lyme disease. Her owner recognized that she was not doing well and not in the right place. Um, they 
had heard that I had huskies and she came by and so I started fixing her up. I'd say it took about eight months before she was really at a point where I was like, okay, she was feeling better and acting like herself. And then we picked up the mushing about eight years ago now. Wow. Did yeah. she luck out? They she really lucked out. That. And and what I love is the fact that they're so excited. Mm -hmm. We're watching you, you know, hook them up and they cannot wait to get out there. Oh yeah. So what would you say to our viewers here who might want to get involved? I started just getting her used to the harness. They are very specific harnesses. A lot of these places have excellent, excellent customer service and they will walk you through okay. um, what you need to fit it correctly. But you need a, a mushing harness that is meant to be pulled on. Connecticut Valley Siberian Husky Club is in Connecticut. They do some events. There's the biking. Um, Canic Cross, I think, is a really fantastic option for a lot of people, especially if you're not sure if your dog's going to like the bike. And that's just, you get a hip belt um, and your dog pulls you from the waist. <laughs> that sounds like a good one. Um, they can like pull you along yeah. and you get tired. And it right? does give you a boost. It's actually very different than regular running if you do get a dog who really really wants to go and pull on you. Um, it's different. Oh, we just love it. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, those dogs absolutely had a blast. They loved it. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Lauren's Crazy Pet Show. If you are finding yourself just a little bit stir crazy staying in during this time, I know I am, we have got some wonderful suggestions for you and your pet. Take a look. Casey, I think this is a plot by our dogs and cats to get us to stay home. A lot of people are saying that. But while we're home, we're looking for things to do. And I know as a trainer, you have some really great tips to offer. Yes, our dogs have a natural, natural desire to dig, to chew, to shred. And if we don't give them appropriate outlets for that, they'll find our stuff to do that with or they'll find a hole in the backyard. So I spend a lot of time finding ways to enrich my dog's lives and find activities where they can use those natural outlets. So all of us have boxes around the house, either from Chewy, Amazon, or wherever else we've been ordering from while we're staying home. Save the packing material, make sure there's nothing else in there. I just have some paper in here. And then I didn't feed them their full breakfast this morning, so I saved some of their kibble. So I'm gonna sprinkle some of their kibble in there. And just to make it a little more exciting, I've got a mix of some higher value snacks that I'm gonna sprinkle in there. And this taps in on their hunting and foraging instincts. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna put the box on the ground and have them go for it. All right, ladies. One really important note that I like to make, I'm really big on canine fitness. Keeping your dog lean and in really good body condition is really important for their lifestyle. So it's really important if you're gonna be planning on doing enrichment activities during the day, you wanna subtract those calories out of their meals. For example, in preparation for this, uh, my guys only ate about a half breakfast this morning because I knew that they were gonna be doing some other activities and we're all a little bit more sedentary than we are usually. So I didn't really wanna pack on the calories and have them get a quarantine 15 in addition to me. So here we have just your standard plain old egg carton. What you can do with this is just open it up, pop a couple treats in there, close it right back up. If you have an expert dog at home, you may want to tape the egg carton shut. Um, I'm making it nice and easy for these guys. I'm just popping the treats in and closing it nice and easy for them. All right, ready girls? Now I do this with both of my girls together because neither of my dogs resource guard. If you have a dog at home who doesn't like sharing their food, make sure this is an individual activity. Go in a room by yourself with them. You can actually, you can translate a lot of these and use them with your cats too. Instead of using dog treats, you could use cat treats. You could sprinkle some catnip around. The shredding is part of the fun. We kind of want them to all just be eating the cookies, but the shredding part is actually part of the fun for them. There you go, girls. Our next piece of enrichment goes back to the box and we just put some plastic cups in there. You could certainly grab some out of your cabinet and use them. You also want to make sure that you have cups that your dog can fit their nose in. If you have a smushy face brachiocephalic dog, like a pug or a shih tzu, this may not be the best activity for them because you don't, again, want them to be frustrated. And you want to put something nice and exciting in there and let them figure out how do I get it? You want to start off nice and easy. You don't want to make it really complicated for these guys and really tough for them to get to the cookies and the treats. You also want to be really encouraging. This is a group activity. When you see your dog trying to figure out how to do it, tell them they're doing a good job. The point is to keep them engaged but not frustrated. For our next project, I've grabbed another box and then I went into their toy box and just grabbed a couple handfuls of toys and chucked them in there. And then I put a whole bunch of kibble and treats. And then you'll notice there's some pieces of newspaper in there. Um, I have filled 
filled those with some of their favorite treats and I've either folded them shut or I've tied them in knots and they get to shred them and get to the delicious treat inside. It's kind of like a fortune cookie. We all have muffin tins. Um, you can either use your ones from home or you can, this is one from the dollar store. Put some cookies in there and then put some balls on top and then figure out how am I gonna get to the cookies. They get really creative on figuring out how do I get the snacks. You could have just feed them their entire breakfast or dinner this way too. This is a really nice way. Either set up one of these or set up a couple of these and just let them go to town and eat their kibble this way. It's a nice way to use their breakfast to tire them out. Here I have a seltzer bottle that I've emptied out and I put a couple holes in. I used a knife. I also took a lighter to it to kind of uh, dampen these edges so they're not very sharp. It's just really easy and that way it's nice and soft and they aren't going to scrape their faces on it. And I made two holes. You want to make sure the holes are appropriate enough to get the, the size treat out that you want. You can fill it with treats and give it to them to go kick around and figure out how to get the snacks. For all of us to be really well-rounded, we ha need to have a nice um, exercise outlet and a nice mental outlet. And this is a nice way to kind of combine the two of them together in a really nice, healthy way. A lot of us focus on exercising our dogs in ways that can injure them, repeatedly fetching over and over again, running them into the pavement over and over again. But if you can break up their exercise routine with some of these brain engaging games, then you can really, really um, not only help the health of their body, uh, but you can have a nice, well-rounded dog. And I, I have to mention your Gordon Setters because they are so gorgeous. Introduce us to them and, and tell me a little bit about the breed, which I love and we have done stories on, but they are just super duper. They're a fabulous breed. Um, I have two of them. My oldest will be three this summer. That is Joss. My youngest is Bree, who is seven months old. They're a lovely breed. Most people are familiar with the Irish Setter, the big red Irish Setter that we were all, they were really popular back in the 80s. Um, this is the Scottish version. They're a little bit bigger and heavier bone than, than the Irish setters, and they're all black and tan. They're a lot of activity, but they're also a lot of fun. They're very snuggly, they're very sweet, and they're very active. So where can people get in touch with you, Casey, to um, find out more? You can get in touch with me either through um, mydogsplace.com, which is the company that I work for. You can also find my Facebook page, which is Good Dog Academy on Facebook. Oh, I love those Gordon setters. They were soft. Oh, so soft as butter and so delicious, like all pets are dogs and cats and all pets. Hopefully everybody out there is safe and your pet too. Thank you so much for joining us. This has been Lauren's Crazy Pet Show.